it's the Celebrity MasterChef semi-finals. And only the eight best cooks are left. Eight's my lucky number. This is, this is Joey Essex at his best. And he's gonna come through. I'm absolutely astounded that I'm here. And so far, it's been an absolute scream. Now it's fight or flight as two more celebrities face the chop. When the helicopter lands, your food should be next door to serve. Fire! Oh, God. Was well, it ow? Oh, I have never seen anything so chaotic in all my life. Every challenge, it's an eliminator to get to the final, to get to the world title. Now that I am this far along, I want to have every experience possible. This is such good fun. The level of competition is fiercer than I could have ever anticipated. I am feeling like a big old nervous bag of shaky jelly. Located in Dover, on England's south coast, is one of Her Majesty's Coast Guard search and rescue centres. Stay where you are! Don't move! Welcome to the MasterChef semi-finals. The first time we've seen you eight together. Hey, at last. You are on the very windy but iconic White Cliffs of Dover. This is home to the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. They are responsible for the safety of not only people at sea, but on the shoreline and on the cliffs. They operate 365 days of the year, no matter what the weather. Today, you have the honour of feeding 100 of the people that dedicate their lives to the safety of others. You will be working in teams. Dillian, Joey, Jenny and Neil, you are the red team. Yes. Get to know each other very well. Yeah. It's, it's, it's us, it's us. Oh, so, the blue team, Vicky, Kelly, Dom, and Greg. <laughs> Three hours to lunch, plenty of time to do something very, very beautiful and quite complex. We wish you the very best of luck. Come Off on, you go. Guys. Guys. Come on. Good luck. <laughs> Coast Guard, see what they do is absolutely incredible. So you want to make sure they're well fed, they're well looked after, kept nice and warm, and then they can uh, crack on saving people's lives. We're cooking in a tent for 100 people. I can't imagine it, mate. I feel like this is going to be... I don't know, it could be a disaster. The teams now have three hours to create a meat, fish and vegetarian dish and a pudding. I'm overwhelmed this with the choice. Although they've done mass catering before, we're asking them to step it up. This is mass catering with style. They're going to have to be focused, they're going to have to make a plan, and they're going to have to deliver really good food. The blue team's ingredients include... What is that? Is that cod? Whole cod, pork loin, mussels and brown shrimps, potatoes, asparagus, rhubarb and apples. Well, bear in mind, it, it's cold, yeah. and these guys are seafaring things, so I think they're going to want quite good, hearty... Huh. Yeah. Agreed. 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 Shout out. So I think a good chop with a nice buttery mash. Yes. The wind's blowing, 100 people, everyone deserves a good plate. It's the first time we've all worked together. Yeah, it's intense. The red team's ingredients include lamb shoulder... What are they? Oh. Dover sole... Yes, of course. Dover Soul and Dover, yeah. isn't it? Samphire. Brilliant, perfect. Samphire. Yes. Chard and a range of fruits and berries. What's these? Are these chickens? No. Joey, it doesn't look like a chicken to you. <laughs> when have you seen a chicken that big? I was, I was half a chicken. When have you seen a chicken? <laughs> chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Back to reality, right. 
we can roast those lamb yeah. with rosemary, garlic, olive mm -hmm. oil, yeah, get yeah. them nice and soft, serve some them with salt. some roasted potatoes yeah. and roasted veg. We've got the lovely Dover fish, souls. Delva soles. So for a veg option... Vegetable pasta? Is there any pasta? If they are pasta. Who are we picking as team leader? I, I have somebody in mind. I think Kelly. <laughs> I think Kelly, Kelly can give it a go. Are you, okay. happy, are you happy okay. to be team leader? Yeah, as long as we work together. Yeah, we'll we'll work. Yeah, what about the vegetarian option, like a nice cottage cheese tart? Well, can we do a fish pie? Fish pie. Oh, do you know? Fish pie. Uh, the blue team have put Kelly in charge, and they seem to have an idea of what they're going to cook. I need right. it. Should we do that? Yeah, really? I need it. Come Please. on. Right. I'll have a go at the lamb. Yeah. Chef, I'll do the lamb here, Joey. You want to do the lamb? You want to do the lamb? Let me start getting these fuds on. I think we should make Jen team leader. I'll do it, if, yeah, uh, if you guys agree. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In terms of our team, they're strong personalities. <laughs> Keeping those three in check is going to be pretty tricky. Jenny, could you tell me your menu, please? So we are having roasted lamb with some Crunchy spiced potatoes and Mediterranean vegetables. Fish. We've got some Dover sole, which I'm trying to figure out how to deal with. Beautiful. And what are you going to serve the Dover sole with? I don't, I don't really know. OK. Yeah. All right. And what about pudding? Pudding, I'm just trying to puzzle out. When are you all going to come to a final decision on what your dishes are going to be? I mean, we're prioritising the fact that there's some big hunks of meat that need to get in the oven ASAP and get those potatoes in roasting. Because... Big thing is get your potatoes done, get your lamb in the oven... Yes. ...and then finalise the ideas. Reconvene when... yeah. What could possibly go wrong? The red team is using the chaos theory. They're going to have to come together as a group and make decisions on each one of these dishes. <laughs> Joey's making the chicken. <laughs> I've got the chickens a lot. Fused. Oh, you're a legend, Joey. <laughs> <Who's asleep? laughs> With just under three hours till lunch, the blue team have already started prep for all three mains. So, what's the menu? We're starting, we're doing a fish pie. Right. What else is going in the fish pie besides the, besides the cod? Prawns. Some mussels. Then we're doing pork chops in a really nice, rich tomato sauce. Right. Um, then we're going to do apple pie. Yeah. And um, we're going to do a cheese, um, asparagus, and red pepper flan for vegetarians. Fantastic. Team leader Kelly is tackling the filleting of two whole cod. I fillet the very little fish, which is eat. This is like a monster. I think I've butchered it. Good job it's going in a fish pie. Reality star Vicky has the job of preparing enough potatoes to make mash to be served with the fish pie and the pork chops. The most people I've ever made mash for was when I did my last dish and that was pork. So this is a slight escalation. It's sort of quite unusual. I've never actually taken a sort of meat before. <laughs> TV personality Dom is butchering 30 pork chops, which he plans to serve with a tomato and chorizo sauce. My carpentry skills are coming in quite handy, but it just seems to be a bit odd. Go on, Dom, lad. Oh. Put your back into it. Dom, you seem to be like the master butcher here. I'm getting the hang of hey. it. Basically, just making a, uh, a cheese sauce to go into the veggie meal. It's quite a nice atmosphere to be in at the moment. Everybody's, I guess, because we've only just really started, um, everybody's quite happy, everybody's got their jobs. Dom's had a crash course in butchery and he seems to be very, very happy with his progress. Kelly's doing fishmongery and Vicky's there spud bashing. She's making mashed potato in volume. Fantastic. So, right, they're ready. Ugh. But progress is slower in the red tent. Reality star Joey and former footballer Neil have prepped 10 shoulders of lamb with rosemary that will need at least two hours to roast. Hey. Oh, they smell beautiful, they do. That's it. 
Meat's in. And heavyweight boxer Dillian is working on potatoes for all three main courses. I'm going to make like seasoned, seasoned um, crystal potatoes full of chilies and stuff, so it's got a bit of bite to it. Everyone loves a bit of spice, aren't they? But team leader and pro quizzer Jenny is yet to answer the question of what the final menu will be. Guys, you have already used up 40 minutes. But what you need to do is get on with it, guys, because otherwise you are doomed. The clock is ticking, and Jenny is under pressure to decide the team's next steps. The Dover sole will need to be trimmed. Joey, you can trim the soles. They're easy to trim. Yeah, you can do that, mate. Well, I'm not the man for fish. Just, just putting it out there. Me and fish don't get on. Oh, is that all you got to do? Yeah, that's literally all you got to do. I worked in a salmon gutting factory. So why are you complaining about doing the Dover sauce? Because I worked there for one day and got sacked. I hate it so much. The fish life wasn't for me, but here I am, making fish happen. Oh, oh, I dropped a fish. No. Pick it out. Oh, it's going to be all hairy. Five second roll. No, watch mate, watch you can't watch the fish. They've got to kick it up a pace. I can see issues in that red tent. Established in 1822, Her Majesty's Coast Guard is a world leader in maritime search and rescue. Her Majesty's Coast Guard responds to around about 22,000 incidents per year. These are all the way around the 8,000 or so miles of coastline that uh, we cover. Um, and this could be anything from a small boat in distress up to a large vessel, some sort of incident. It could be children playing on the beach. It could be a wide variety of situations that we'll respond to. The Dover Strait is one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. And since the 1970s, this station has been key to monitoring its waters. The Dover Centre operates 24 hours a day. And when not on search and rescue, provides training for volunteers and staff from around the country. There's around about 220 volunteer Coast Guard rescue officers that we can call upon to render assistance if required. We're quite a busy organisation. An hour of cooking time has gone. And in the red tent, Jenny has finally come up with a plan for the fish and vegetarian mains. I'm going to do a vegetable tartlet with goat's cheese and um, cherry tomatoes. Sounds nice. Baked Dover sole with potatoes. samphire potatoes. And I'm still trying to decide what sauce. Oh. Yep. I feel like we might be getting a little bit behind now, so we really need to, to kick on now that we are more settled with with our menu. In the blue tent, Vicky has made fast work of the potato prep for the mash and is layering phyllo to make pastry cases for the vegetarian main, which she will then blind bake. So I am going to make the um, asparagus, cheese and onion tart. Phyllo is brand new news to me. It's nice to learn a new skill. Can someone open the oven for me, please? They're the phyllo pastry cases. Thank you, Kelly, for your help. Olympic long jumper Greg is also making good progress. He's finished the cheese sauce that will act as the filling for the phyllo cases and is working on the apple crumble tart dessert. Shortcast pastry is one of the easiest things in the world to make, but I often mess it up. But it won't go wrong today, of course. Easy. There's tarts to make, there's tart filling to make. I hope they get that tart done. These are some seriously big chops. Way! Look at that! Chops are away, they're all done. Well, seared anyway. I'm coming through. Go on, this. Having butchered and seared 30 pork chops, Dom can make a start on the tomato and chorizo sauce he plans to bake them in. Oh, part of the chop. Still trying to get the fish pie done. The fish is all baked up, the mussels are cooking, then we'll mix it all together and then bang it in the oven. The blue team 
seemed to be calm and working very, very well, but as we know, anything can happen. Oh, no, I burnt them! Oh, dear. I'd never cooked it before. I had no idea how quickly it would cook. They were done within, like, minutes, so made a massive mistake. No, I can do about it now. Just need to crack on and get them done again. Can you not burn the tarts, please? I'm not promising anything. In you go. You want to time them or anything? No, I'm just going to stand here and watch them. Once burned, twice shy. Over half the cooking time has gone. And the red team is finally making headway with their prep. Well, I think I've done all the fish. The spicy potatoes and a Mediterranean veg side dish are ready to roast. Guys, you need to think about your oven space. Yep. You have to work it out somehow. Because you've got everything going through the oven. Go sideways. Let me get them all in, then. These are going to be the tart cases for the vegetarian tart. Bit of a blind bake, I think. If there's an oven ring, you're using all the shells, right? I need an oven at some point. <laughs> While Jenny waits for oven space, she gets cracking on their dessert. It's going to be a sponge pudding. Um, we're going to have some custard that Ray's is going to make and some um, blackberries. I think the Red Team's sponge pudding is actually lovely if they can manage to get it done, because everything they're cooking requires the oven. They're going to have to get some sort of shift worked out. Morning, the staff and volunteers at the Coast Guard have been hard at work, running practice search and rescue drills. Coast Guard rescue. Does it look like they're injured at all? So what we're going to do is we're going to get a Coast Guard rescue team uh, heading in your direction, uh, and we'll be able to assist that person from there. There's just 45 minutes to go. Vicky's successfully blind baked her second batch of phyllo tart cases. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to, I've got a cheese sauce, I've got some mushrooms, I've got some asparagus, I'm going to add the mix and put them in. And Dom's tomato and chorizo sauce for the pork is ready. It's really very good. I think this is going to turn out to be one meal and a half. All cooked all the way through? Not yet. They're just about to go in the oven. So it should be absolutely fine. Because they're thick pork chops, they right? They are huge. You can't serve that pink. But I've got to get it in. Pig's in! Pig's in! OK. <laughs> Kelly, are you able to tell me where each dish is right now? The pork chops are in the oven. The mashed potatoes are done. Fish pie's here ready. And the desserts are about to be blind baked and then the, the apples and everything's ready. So nothing's actually yet completed, is it? No. Mate, you've still got a fair bit to do, you know. Can you put that one in, so at least we've got one in? Yeah. What's it? Ow! You all right, Dom? You all right? Bye, mate. Bye. Bye. Over in the red tent, the lamb mane is the only dish under control. Jenny, what's left to go, please? What's left to go? Um, we need to uh, check on the fish. Are the fish in? No. No? OK, so five minutes, the lamb will be out, and we can reclaim the oven space. These puddings need to go in. And we need to sort out those vegetarian goat's cheese tartlet things. I don't think anyone's completely aware of where everything is at this stage. No. no. All right. <laughs> and with the fish and sponge cake still to cook, there's yet more problems with the oven. What's burning? There's obviously something burning because this tent's full of smoke. <laughs> what is happening? Fire! 
There are flames coming out of that oven. Oh, God. <sighs> Bits and folds come over that way, so that was burning. You won't be able to serve these black bits. I'll eat that, Chef. You're going to eat the burnt bits? Eat anything, Chef. What's happening with vegetarian? Um, I need to deal with that next. What well, do you need right. help doing? You need help there chopping you go. the cheese? That'd be brilliant. Thank there you. There we are. Yeah. Right. I'll get it done, but I will make it look good. Are they going in? They go, they're about to go in, if, if it's safe to do so. Oh. 15 minutes, guys. You've got 15 minutes. They've got to get a move on. Oh, they ain't going to get it out. Oh, that red team scares me. It's almost lunchtime. You'll hear a helicopter. When that helicopter lands, your food should be next door to serve. Here we go, it's coming down. Let's go with the food. Oh, Dom, they look amazing, mate. We need to test one, though, Dom. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Perfect. Oh, happy oh day! Happy Smashed day! It. What we're going to do is now, so I'm going to crumble over the top, stick it back in the oven, finally coming together with these up with these desserts. So you're happy with that now? Yeah, happy. And you got chantilly cream going, so it's cream, going to be hot. Cream's on. on. Cream's on. The blue team seemed to have pulled it out of the bag. But the red team is nowhere near ready. Do you both need to be on the meat? I think so. We're not even halfway through yet. It's very hard to carve this stuff. What is Fair that? Enough. It's what? supposed to be a bird blanc. For the fish? Yeah. It's basically vinegar sauce now. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't serve it. No. Can't you make a simple parsley sauce? Like a roux. A roux. Add milk. Add... You've got a white sauce. Let's do it. Flavour it. Go on, kids. You can do it. You've got ten minutes. I'm really up against it now. I have never seen anything so chaotic in all my life. You need to be moving next door really soon. Quick, 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 quick. Let's go, go, go. Blue team are moving in already. Let's go. See the helicopter? That's the Coast Guard. Yikes. All right? And they want their lunch. Tuts. Whoa, that nearly went down. Where would right, you take me? The OK. I am absolutely shattered. Looks amazing. Well done. Looks good. We've done it. Well done. Great. Good. It's landed. It's one o'clock and all our food is out. Job done. Red team. Food needs to go next door and be hot, please. If you can stack up a couple at a time and take them, that's even better. So I'm hoping for some, yeah, tasty food. I'm really hungry after today. I'd rather like to look at the, the roast lamb or the Dover sole, because that's obviously local, isn't it, you know? Joey, are you going to get the fish over? Fifteen minutes late. Both teams are finally ready. We tried as a four, but we did the best we could. Hi, guys. Yes. Hi, everyone. Red or blue? Dillian Red or blue? Right, Sam. Don't upset Dillian. 
chop. The blue team is serving pork chops baked in a tomato and chorizo sauce. How's that? Yeah, looks incredible. Look at that. Wow! <laughs> served with mashed potato and broccoli. There you go, honey. Yeah, Enjoy. It was huge. It was like the size of the plate, so it was lovely. And the mash was lovely. The veg is really nice. Really pleased. Oh, absolutely fantastic. I could eat it again. <laughs> really nicely cooked pork with a really lovely red sauce across the top. Mashed potato on the side. You can't go wrong with that. Yeah, go on out to the fish pie. Fish pie too? There's also plenty of takers for the blue team's cod, mussel and prawn fish pie topped with cheesy mash. There you go, my love. Enjoy, honey. The mash was very silky smooth. The fish and the seafood inside it was really nice. It wasn't too tough. Um, it, was, it was very, very enjoyable, yeah. Flavours are really strong through it. I like strong flavours in a fish pie, and it was really nice. Creamy, nicely seasoned mashed potato. No bones, the fish is cooked. It's everything you'd want from a fish pie apart from appearance. The red team is serving roast lamb with spicy roast potatoes, Mediterranean veg and lamb gravy. I think that's side's popular. Well done, Red. The lamb was a little bit on the dry side, but apart from that, it was really enjoyable, yeah. Really tasty. The vegetables were nice. Roast potatoes have got a bit of, I think, chilli or some spice on them. Really, really nice. Well, the lamb itself, the bits that are crispy are lovely. I love the spice they've got on the potatoes. I think the sweet vegetables are nicely done. I mean, it's rustic, but it's most certainly hearty. So, Dover so up here and want some Dover so. For their fish main, they're serving Dover sole with Jenny's last-minute parsley sauce, samphire and the spicy potatoes. Very delicious. The sauce on the side was really, really nice as well. Well cooked. I absolutely love the potatoes. They've got a lovely heat to them. I thought they weren't going to get it done. Somehow, the fish has cooked nicely. The parsley sauce is a little bit thick. It's an unusual way of presenting it, with the skin still on. Three jobs left. Fight, fight, fight. We sold a lot of vegetarian. We haven't, have we? No. Tart, I haven't done as well as I would have liked. I can't tempt you with a lovely cheese, asparagus, and mushroom tart, can I? Vicky has finally got some takers for her asparagus, mushroom, and cheese phyllo tarts. I hope you enjoy it, hon. Thank you very much. It's really good, actually, yeah, really nice. Nice crispy pastry, really cheesy. It's good. Very, very nice. Definitely go for this again. A phyllo tart crispy on the outside, creamy sauce in the middle, mushrooms and asparagus, cheese across the top. Vicky did really well. It's up here, a vegetarian option. Lovely, lovely jubbly. The red team is offering a meat-free option of goat's cheese, cherry tomato and Swiss chard tart. It's really nice, actually. Nice and crispy. Definitely tell the goat's cheese is well in there, so... Uh, and the, the veg on the top is really nice. Nice to cook pastry with that dry, tangy goat's cheese with sweet, juicy little tomatoes with them is a nice combo. With mains over, both teams need to get their desserts out. <sighs> we have a dessert. It worked. This one was a bit. This one's a bit weird. There's a leak in pudding, everyone. That one is still like liquid. Oh my god! Look at this. Three of my sponges are slightly underdone, and three are slightly overdone. Right. So we haven't got enough pudding, have we? 
with just three usable sponges, Jenny's team will only have enough for 36 portions. I am thrilled to bits. Dessert? No dessert. Oh, here it comes. All right, Chef. Come on, quick, 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 dessert. If you got to queue up and look at that, you would come this side. <laughs> come and get it, guys! The blue team's dessert is apple crumble pie. Enjoy, guys! Served with rhubarb and chantilly cream. Ooh, Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. These are flying out like hot cakes, literally. The red team's sponge cake is being served with custard and berries. Oh, lovely. Sponge is really nice. Um, really, really well done, actually. It tastes beautiful. Could eat more, actually. I could have seconds. Dessert, we have an issue because some of the puddings are cooked and some of them weren't cooked. That is really nice, soft, light sponge. A really good, thick, creamy custard. That is lovely. Uh, we've, we've, run done out, the sponge. we've run out of sponge pudding. Oh, you can go to the other side. Oh, they have run out. There you go, good. Ready done for Enjoy. portions. Thankfully, the blue team has plenty to spare. Lovely. Could I have tried some sugar, honey? Yes, please. There you go, good. Oh, well, lovely. Thank you. Enjoy. I'm a dessert freak, and it was delicious. Absolutely amazing. The apple was really tasty, good crumble, and the pastry a nice crisp bottom. Mmm. The pastry is crispy and buttery that's in the underneath. The crumbled top has got lots and lots of sugar in it. Delicious. I very much like that. Team. Well Absolutely smashed well it. Done. Well done. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Well it done, was me. such a pleasure working with Isn't you. It? This is amazing. Absolutely superb. From all of us, thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed it. Very proud of what you do. You're true heroes. God bless you. Keep safe. Hope you enjoyed your food. Thank you. <laughs> They're inspirations, they're heroes, and it was so nice to be able to repay them, even just a little bit, just to put hot food in their stomachs. And I think quite nice hot food, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this was more difficult than I imagined. Yeah. I've never known anything like that. <laughs> John, they worked hard. There were times they looked all at sea. Come on, guys. Well, well, well done for turning up, anyway. Well done. Next, it's back to the MasterChef kitchen, and two of them are going home. I've been all right. I've been all right. A very warm welcome back to the MasterChef kitchen. You did a brilliant job on the very windy White Cliffs of Dover. That was as teams. Today, you are cooking as individuals. In that last challenge, we gifted you with the most amazing array of produce. And in this round, we want you to cook for us one dish with all the ingredients that are left over. <laughs> <laughs> One plate of your own design, sweet or savoury, your choice, that at the end of this, two of you will be going home. Come up and choose your ingredients. The leftovers include cod fillets, pork chops and bacon, chorizo, mussels, cheese, and a range of fruit and vegetables. This is my worst nightmare of... I can't, I can't see anything. 
I've not really done fish yet, so I just thought, do a bit of fish, see what happens. Hope for the best. What are you doing? Are you doing dessert? I'd be. Nervous about this, and there's a, there's a bit of ingredient blindness going on. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Big round. One hour and 20 minutes. Let's cook. If I was given four ingredients, I'd probably say, OK, I think I can do that with that and that with that. Give me 2,000 ingredients and it's a little bit... Whoa. I'm actually making bread and I'm doing a Stilton and onion with a splash of cider soup. I love Stilton. Uh, it's one of the, the soups that I will make at home. And the last one I did was out of filth. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm trying to make sure that this time that I actually get it right. He's making soda bread fantastic. A bowl of soup can't be too watery, otherwise it doesn't have any flavour, no? And the amount of Stilton is really important because that's what gives that soup its flavour. The competition has completely taken over my life. I need to maybe sit in a dark room when this is all over and completely remove all cooking, because all I've thought about is becoming a better chef. What are you making? So mashed potato. I've made a chorizo uh, spicy sauce, chili-infused piece of cod. I'm going to put some spinach with the potato on top, rest a bit of fish against it, surround it with this quite thick sauce, and hopefully you enjoy it. Can you hear yourself, Greg? <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> who, who have I become? <laughs> Mashed potato as creamy as you like, full of butter, a piece of cod across the top, which is spiced well, and a little tomato sauce around the outside. It could be fantastic. Thirty minutes gone, everybody. Half an hour gone. I like to take risks, and when you take a risk and it works, it's brilliant. So. I'm taking a risk, man. I've sort of made up my own little meal. I'm going to call it a storotto. So it's a stir fry slash a risotto. I've never done a risotto before. I want to make it quite sticky. Do you know what I'm saying? So when it mixes in the stir fry, it sort of, it sort of sticks together a little bit. Is that really a thing, or have I just made that up? Well, if it's good, you've made a thing. Joey is making something that he's decided to call a stir rotto. Lots and lots of different vegetables with some rice. However, he wants to be really sticky and gluggy. I don't understand. It just puts a bit more flavour in the rice. Jenny has made a hollandaise. That shows progress. She's pan frying a piece of cod. Then she's got little tiny oysters which she's going to make crispy almost like a tempura batter on the outside. And little crisp breads with mussels and anchovies. That's a lot of work. Do you mind me asking you how the competition has impacted on you? It's non-stop. It's night and day. I don't read any other books than cookbooks at the minute. Wouldn't change it, though, would you? I'm having a real ball, and um, I've already learned so much, so I don't want this to be my last challenge. I feel like I'm putting more pressure on myself than, than MasterChef is. <laughs> I am very harsh on myself because I want to do things right and I want to not let anybody down. Cooking off the cuff, I've done it for years, especially growing up, you know, you used to open the cupboard, the cupboard was bad. We weren't that rich as a kid growing up in council estates, you, you had what you had. So I'm quietly confident that I should be able to produce something. Invention test doesn't scare you? No. So I'm going like sort of Spanish mixed vegetable, tomato sauce, garlic, chilli. Then I'm going to have my cod on top with 
bacon crumbles. I've watched you cook quite a few times now. And when you like what you're cooking, you do little descriptions. I'm going to put a little bit... Oh, do I? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good thing? <laughs> yeah, I think it must be. Do I? It just comes out nice. The piece of cod, which he's going to roast great, and we know he gives bold flavours. Will it be elegant? That's what I want from him now. I want something elegant. 30 minutes left. That needs a little bit longer rasting. I do still have a tendency to be neurotic and flap. I'd like to be cool, calm and collected in the kitchen today, which is easier said than done. Vicky is making for us a citrus tart. Brilliant, she's made short crust pastry. Needs to be cooked all the way through before the filling goes in. Once the filling's in, then it's got to be cooked again. <gasps> I think Vicky's ambition is admirable. I'm really worried about my tart. Just don't know if it looks like it's setting right. It's good. Yeah. I'm gonna cook in the time like any top tips. No, I just don't know. All through my career in boxing, I gambled on big promotions. Nine times out of ten, they paid off. I go by the skin of my teeth. So today, I've got to hope my recipe will pay off. Kelly, what are you going to cook? I'm doing a pork with lemon and ginger rice with a tomato and cherry sauce. Tell me why you went for the cherries with the tomatoes. It's unusual. Cooking's about imagination. I'm using my imagination today. The cherries are a concern. I feel like we might have a main course and a dessert on the same plate. I usually have leftovers to eat, not to cook with. <laughs> so I'm just going in there winging it today. I'm just going to swing for the hills and see what happens. Invention test didn't trouble you? Yeah, of course. You know, it is hard. But I got better appreciation for food and my perception of food and what ingredients go together has got so much wider. Shopping bills got a lot more expensive as well. Because I, I, I'm trying things to see Oh, what can it work? What can it, instead of just eating chicken and rice? Dillian is cooking a piece of cod in a parcel, and his fish has got lots and lots of spice. He's got garlic mash. Very, very nice. The fish needs to be cooked spot on. Five minutes left. Everything's good to go. Just needs the tart. Ninety seconds, just ninety seconds. Time is up. Time's up. Neil, would you please? For his place in the final six, Neil has made pan-fried cod, topped with a crispy bacon crumb and dill, on a pepper and tomato sauce, with a side of roast potatoes and chorizo. You're trying with presentation, I can really see it. Your seasoning's spot on. Your fish cookery is spot on. That mixture of the bacon salty crumb, the cod and the dill is absolutely fantastic. That sweet sauce you've got there is an absolute perfect match for a piece of cod. Lovely, crispy <laughs> chunks of potato. Your flavours are immense. I'm happy they, they, liked, they liked the taste of my food. Boom! <laughs> I'll give myself 9 out of 10 for, for cooking saying that you never know who's going to cook. Jenny has served pan-fried cod with samphire, tempura oysters, mussel and anchovy toast, and a wild garlic hollandaise sauce.
Your cod is really nicely cooked. Your hollandaise is nicely made. I'm a big oyster fan. You get that saltiness of the sea and you've got a nice crispy coating across the top. Well done. I am really impressed with your technical prowess. Hollandaise, muscle toast and invention test, crispy oysters. You should be really happy. I can't wait for my mum to see this. <laughs> she will be really surprised with how fast I've, I've learned. This is the rotto's coming. Oh, yeah. Comes with a lot of flavour, a lot of vibes. Joey's stirotto is a mixture of boiled rice and egg, which he's combined with a stir-fry of broccoli, peppers, mushrooms and tomatoes, flavoured with ginger and garlic. That's a stirotto. That's my motto. That's not dirty. That's for certainty. Even if you served it to a certain man, even if you serve this to my nan, you would say it's quite peng. My nan would say it's quite leng. <laughs> the broccoli is a little greasy. I think it needs work on presentation. That rice is taking on the texture of like a rice pudding, mm. a cold rice pudding. I've never seen anybody do it before. Boil it and then add eggs and mush it all up together. I really like the garlic and the ginger with the vegetables. That, for me, is the best bit. The rice itself has gone all mushy. It's a bit of a mishmash, Joey. It's a new invention. I, I think people would, I don't know, I think it could be served in restaurants. Uh, probably not going to take off, Joey. Don't you think? No. Today was just a bit of a, <laughs> it was just a bit of a mad one. Like, I just went for this Dorotto. I got mixed comments, really. Even if you served it to my nan. Greg has spiced his cod with chilli and served it with mashed potato, wilted spinach and a tomato and chorizo sauce. I think that's a really, really attractive plate. Your mashed potato has got a wacky amount of butter in it and therefore it's delicious. Your spinach is a delight. Your fish is cooked beautifully. It falls apart where it should do. I love it. There you go. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Your cod has got that beautiful chilli rust colour on it and it is flaking perfectly. And your accompaniment of sauce has got plenty of smoky paprika in it. I believe you've absolutely nailed this. get that sort of response. I genuinely can't believe it. I've had some good achievements in my life, but that's, that's quite a... It's quite a good in that one. I'm quite happy about that. Kelly has made a pan-fried pork chop spiced with paprika, chorizo and onion, served with lemon and ginger rice and a tomato, chorizo and cherry sauce. I wish you'd have had more time at the end, you weren't rushed, and then you would most certainly got better presentation on this. Love the flavour around the outside of the pork chop with that spiciness of chorizo and lots and lots of onions. Love the lemon going through your rice. I don't think the cherry sauce goes with the lemon rice. I got flavoured cherry and lemon together and rice, and I think sort of dessert, and then I've got spicy pork. My mind's a bit fuddled. Pork's cooked OK. I wouldn't mind a little bit more crisping up on that fat. This sauce, I'm not convinced by. There's a bitterness to it, mixed with a, a very sweet cherry. This is an experiment. It does taste like an experiment, Kelly. It was cooking blind for me, which... I'm not that good at doing. I gave it 100%, so just if I ain't seen it, it's in the hands of the judges. Dom's dish is a Stilton celery and cider soup served with his own soda bread.
That soup is lovely. Really well seasoned. The underlying flavour of Stilton, it's smooth, it's silky. Your bread's fantastic. Crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. I have got no complaint at all, Dom. Really, really love your soup and your soda bread. Like its appearance, like its flavour. All I can do is congratulate you, Dom. <laughs> I am proud of that dish. I'm proud of the bread. <laughs> I'm happy with that. And actually, I thoroughly enjoyed the soup. Um, and finished off most of what was left. Dillian chose to work with the cod, which he flavoured with chilli and thyme. It's served with a garlic mash topped with chives, sliced carrot, broccoli and beans, and finished with a white wine, chilli and caper sauce. Lots of garlic in that very well-made mashed potato. Like the thyme flavour across your fish, really like your sauce. It's got a fair amount of chilli in, which is good. That fish, for me, is overcooked. It's going dry. I love your flavours, Dillian. You're big, you're bold, you're brave, and that's what your food's all about. Your fish is over. We've got the flavours right. The main bit of the cod, you've overcooked. Bit disappointing. I just remember I cooked the cod five, ten minutes less than them. Last up is Vicky who's made an orange and lemon short crust pastry tart served with Chantilly cream. Love the presentation, Vicky. It's absolutely lovely. You get the orange sweetness and the lemon sharpness that you need. Chantilly cream to make the whole thing mellow, soft and creamy. It's really, really good. It's so brave and it's such a technical thing to do in an invention test. Bingo. You can either play it safe in this round or you can actually go for it. Oh, yeah. And you smash it out of the park. You know when you go into a job interview and you smash it and you try your hardest and you think, if you don't want me after that, I couldn't have done any better. That's how I feel. Honestly, some amazing cooking. What a fantastic start to the semi-finals. Which two are leaving the competition? You've definitely got five cooks there that can't go home. Neil, Jenny, Vicky, Dom, and Greg. Agreed. That means now we've got to have a discussion about Kelly, Joey and Dillian. Kelly was in full invention mode. The pork chop itself, crispy on the outside and nicely seasoned. But cherries and tomatoes and chorizo was a little bit unnerving as a combination. Pork, well done. Rice, nicely cooked. That sauce I found odd. Dillian cooked for us a piece of spiced cod. I thought the flavour of the actual sauce was fantastic. Loads and loads of garlic in the mash. Nothing shy about his plate at all. Fish, he'd overcooked it. There's no escaping it. Joey decided to invent something called storotto, which in actual fact was a stir fry and a risotto mixed together. An interesting invention. I found the vegetables in that dish a little oily. <sighs> Do you know what? It wasn't his best day. I feel like I've shown John and Greg courage. Hopefully they see that, as well as tasting my food and my wrap and put everything together as one little puzzle and they go, it's perfect. And they put me through. It would be nice to stay, but whatever the judges decide then, I'm probably going to go back in and get my P45. And I'm enjoying learning, but I'm not a chef, you know what I mean? So let's see if, if my old cod is good enough to keep me in your competition. We've only got one more place in the next round.
incredible display of talent in this room today. And I'm so pleased for all of you. Sadly, two of you are going home. The two celebrity contestants leaving us are Joey and Kelly. I knew it, I knew it. I knew it. Oh. I knew it. So oh, like, you look after yourself. Hey, right? Joey. Like, Great to meet you, mate. It was good, though. Oh. I enjoyed it. Nice to see you. Thanks. See you soon. Thanks. Thank you. It's the right who's ruined my life, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like sometimes you've got to take these challenges on, you know, and I took it on, and I'm coming out of my head higher. Today was just a bad day out. Maybe I should have stayed safe. But to get to the semi-finals was a bonus. <laughs> I'm always proud of myself every little achievement making life. It's good to get this far, final six. When I first came here, I was a rubbish culinary caterpillar. And now you are seeing me emerge as a big fancy chef. <laughs> Butterfly chef. <laughs> it's mind blowing. I am thrilled to bits, but surrounded by really, really good cooks. We're going to all have to up our game if we want to stay in this and try and push through to that final. <laughs> Next time, the pressure intensifies as the final six take on the recipes of one of the world's most popular chefs. If I get this wrong, the whole thing is ruined. That's slightly terrifying. It looks really, really good. It looks professional. Before battling to stay in the competition. The celebrity leaving us 